Now, when did you first start working in comic books? Working in comics. Well, that's actually a very odd story, um, and it takes an unusual route. I loved comics when I was younger, but when I hit the age around 16 or so, um, I discovered girls and yeah. comic books and mm -hmm. and everything uh, kind of uh, nerd culture related at the time was it was not mainstream yeah. uh, at that same, time. Same thing happened with me. And right. I think when you get to that age, a lot of people kind of fall out of comic books and then kind of come back because you know you're right. a teenager for a few years. And right, uh, and uh, you know it also. The art and the stories, they were starting to change. This was in the eight, uh, early 80s, so it was just kind of shifting over. You know, the, some of the the uh, some of the different artists. Uh, I mean, I caught Frank Miller's uh, Daredevil oh, wow. uh, when it was coming out, or some of it. Uh, but then, you know, everything that kind of happened in the 80s, I missed. Um, because I went to school... Uh, my, my father was a graphic artist, and my mom was an art teacher. Oh, wow. Uh, so I kind of grew up with art in the house, and, and they encouraged me because I drew all the time. Um, I started making up my own comic books and whatnot when I was younger. Um, but I think as I got a little older, I, I didn't think of art as a, a potential career for myself. I started looking at other stuff. Uh, I wanted to be an actor. Um, and I got into the theater programs and stuff like that. So I kind of put that stuff aside. My last kind of like play when I was uh, still thinking in terms of comic books was 1978. I, I took my portfolio. I was 14, I think, at the time. Uh, Chris Claremont and John Byrne and Frank Miller were at the Chicago Comic Con. Uh, Frank Miller was just the new young guy in the office. Wow. Um, and John Byrne and Chris Claremont were in the middle of the They X -Men were run. in the middle of the X-Men run, and oh, they wow. were top dogs. Yeah. They were the, uh, and Terry Austin was there as well. Um, they were the they were the cream of the crop. I, you know, that's meeting the, the Holy Trinity. Um, and I showed them my portfolio, and they were fine. They were nice enough, but uh, I think my ego got hurt. Uh, at the time, yes, you're I was. Fourteen years old. You're yes, you know? it's going to get hurt. <laughs> it's going to get hurt. Uh, so I think at that time I went, okay, I'm setting that stuff aside. Uh, so my transition, I always wanted to stay and do something creative. So I, I stayed in the theater programs, um, and you know, dabbled a little bit with writing. Uh, and I went to school for theater, um, uh, for university, uh, and I took art classes just to kind of supplement life study courses and things. I was never going to drop it, but I don't think I thought in terms of comics any longer. I just wanted to, you know, this was a skill that I had developed over the years, and so I just wanted to keep it, um, you know, add to it a little bit, but I didn't think I needed to go to school for yeah. it. You thought, at that point. You were like, I'm never going to use this. This is something that, you know, right. I just did as a hobby growing up. Right. And I've uh, I've done what I needed to do. You know, I've gotten it now on to another skill <laughs> kind of thinking. Uh, but then I moved out to uh, Los Angeles to make it as a uh, as an actor and maybe possibly direct. Um, and in Chicago, I was getting about 60 to 70% of my auditions, but I move out to L.A., boom, very different story, yeah. very different. Um, you know, I was one of, uh, uh, you know, a clone of about 10 million other guys who looked just like myself, uh, uh, and some of them way better. <laughs> uh, but what I could do, and this is to get into film production, I was a storyboard artist. I oh, could yeah. do storyboards. Uh, so my end was I, I worked uh, with a lot of directors and I worked on a lot of films. I was the resident artist uh, for a place called Full Moon, mm -hmm. which was a lot of horror movies. Oh, uh, and uh, So I did all the storyboards for these things called the Puppet Master movies and they were all these kind of schlocky, mm -hmm. you know, very kitschy uh, 90s kind of horror movies. 
But then I also did some bigger movies. I did some stuff for uh, Sylvester Stallone's Cliffhangers oh, wow. and uh, a couple other things. Movie. Yeah. Um, I was actually having a real career, and then uh, and I got picked up by an ad ad company that wanted me to be uh, a, a madman. You know, I mm-hmm. was uh, I, I went over there did some storyboards, but I had a bunch of ideas, and uh, uh, you know, I started working on. Toyota campaigns and things like that. And I was like, oh, this is what my dad did. And this is like the last thing in the world I wanted to do. Uh, I, uh, you know, my dad was a really great sculptor. He was a graphic artist because he needed to be uh, for just an income for the family. Uh, And I was like, oh, no, I don't want to do anything. I also don't want to be in ads. I don't want to be in in that. So uh, I could have had a career there too uh, I was moving up very rapidly at that and I left uh, I started working in film production and any every aspect you could possibly imagine but storyboard being probably the consistent uh, theme and uh, I was working on um, over at this place called IRS media which I did uh, movies like shakes the clown with Bobcat Goldthwait and uh, one false move with Carl Franklin, which I'm actually in, because then I got my SAG card uh, nice. on a couple of those things. Well, while I was doing these, I did this thing called Circuitry Man, uh, which was uh, Vernon Wells. You know who he is? No uh, oh, he was this Australian character, and he was in uh, Road Warrior. Okay. And he was also in uh, Jeff Loeb's uh, Commando. He was the villain. Oh, and really? It, you know, he was kind of a... You know, um, you know, he was a big guy, and yeah. he had that kind of that kind of crazy Aussie energy uh, that was uh, played as the villain early on in the '80s or in the '90s. I mean, um, anyways, long story short, right, or long story even longer, um, <clears throat> uh, I was doing the storyboards on the Circuitry Man. But the person who was doing the creature design was Neil Adams, or his studio continuity mm-hmm. studios were doing that. And uh, he saw some of my boards and said, were you ever interested in doing comics? And now I knew who Neil Adams was yeah. from my comic book. Of uh, course, he's a legendary yeah. creator for, oh. he, for Green Arrow, Green Lantern in 76. In my opinion, did the definitive Batman, but he also he, he also created uh, Havoc, you know, which was a stunning costume for the time period. It was a daring costume for the X Men, and mm-hmm. his X Men run, as far as I was con- uh, as far as I'm concerned, is also lo- a legendary run. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but he's probably better known for his DC stuff than his Marvel stuff, but yeah. still, uh, he did a great run on the Avengers, which was uh, just pre my uh, my introduction to comics, but mm-hmm. by that time, I had already started going to swap meets and started buying all, all, all the older issues and whatnot. So I, I familiarized myself with uh, all of those artists you know, from the 60s. Uh, I started early 70s, mm-hmm. so... Um, or, Mid seventies, uh, but anyways, uh, I was super excited, and all of a sudden, uh, something that had been dormant for a long time was now a possibility because that was a validation. I don't think I, I, I had either given myself or had a, an opportunity, you know. But so I put together a little portfolio. I took it over there. He looked at it. Goes, mm, no, you're not ready. Wow. And. Um, that lit a fire under my ass, uh, and so I started actively working uh, on improving my skills. And so my very first work, <laughs> now here we are, was with uh, Boneyard Press and um, Hart Fisher, and it was a book called Build the Bowl. It was off press, black and white mm-hmm. stuff, kind of a crime drama take place in Chicago so I was from Chicago yeah. area so uh, right uh, but I was now in LA uh, but at least I knew the locations that Hart would mention in the scripts and mm-hmm. things like that and uh, did a couple of issues of that and now I was actively submitting art to the different publishers mm-hmm.